My question is for Mr. Busanich. The chairman mentioned OIA has uh, designated American Samoa as a high-risk grantee. And uh, I think you've more or less elaborated on how the failure to comply uh, can have this impact on securing uh, federal funding. But providing that the interior appropriations bill that just passed out of committee gets signed into law, we will then see the first increase to the ASG operations account since 1986. And it's my understanding that the bill report recommends that the increase be used to bring ASG into federal compliance. Can you assure me, Mr. Busanich, that OIA will commit to working with ASG to use these funds to meet federal standards? Oh, absolutely. We, we saw that language and we were encouraged by it as well uh, to be able to use that funds to address, we'll work with the government to address specific problems uh, to get that high risk designation completely taken off the books. Ms. Gonzalez, I keep going back to this. Uh, I'm fascinated with your question that you asked earlier about this unspent money, and it just seems that my colleagues are still focusing on this unspent money. And they, I too want to understand, because if this money became available in 2011, that's four years before I was even elected to Congress. Now, uh, the Medicaid director here, um, I'm looking at her statement, and she's extremely critical of the Obama administration, where she says the, the ACA was passed with no input from American Samoa. For us to explain that simply setting aside so much Medicaid funds with a deadline for expenditure by 2019 was not logical, as American Samoa only had one Medicaid provider, which she did explain. And the, the point of it is, is my thinking is, this is about helping the local government. It is about helping our economy. But most importantly of all, we are talking about the health of our people. I mean, I have tears in my eyes. When I go and uh, I go to that hospital, people cannot get what, uh, the services they need, and they have to struggle to find extra money they don't have to try to go up to Honolulu. This has been going on for years. And quite frankly, I too uh, am not, I'm, I'm not convinced that the entire answer is right there. That it would take three or four years to negotiate all these, uh, whatever it is that was being negotiated in order to, to try. I mean, somebody should have gotten to Congress. Somebody should have gotten to the CMS, the Secretary of HHS. I mean, after all, isn't that where the money came from? Secretary of HHS put this pot of money out there. I just, I fail to understand. Uh, uh, let, thank let me, you. Um, uh, Ms. Gonzalez, time has, has uh, expired, but uh, yours is starting. Mr. Radawagan, so I'll recognize you for five minutes. You have a comment uh, to the Medicaid director. Can you please comment on this? Sure. Thank you, Congresswoman. Um, I think the, the committee has, has made a really good point and, and has raised this in your comments and questions about some of the challenges that we face as a territory, and that is um, I, I do want to correct that I did, was not critical of the Obama administration. What I was criticizing is the, the nature of policy making at the federal level, what oftentimes, and this goes to what Ms. Gonzalez had talked about, oftentimes overlooks the input from the territories, which is why it is so valuable that this hearing is being held, because when the 2011 ACA was passed, there was really no uh, relevant consideration with the situation in the territories. For example, in American Samoa, we, we can barely spend this down because we have one hospital. But CNMI needs more money every year because they have dozens and dozens of providers. Guam needs more money. Puerto Rico needs more money. We have a problem spending you know, our money. And you're correct, Congresswoman. Part of the problem is also our own Medicaid program in American Samoa, because for 35 years, nothing changed. And when I came in, in 2013, 2014 was when we started to look at amending the state plan. And it really did take us a, a few years to negotiate this, because before mm. you can change anything with CMS, 
it requires a lot of documentation and financial impact analysis. So we had to hire consultants to do the analysis. The, the procedures are in place already for CMS, and we have a very good relationship with CMS, and they understand what the issues that we're going through. Unfortunately, the changes aren't happening as fast as we would like, but they are changing. So I think together with the federal agencies and the federal government having a better understanding of our local situations for all the territories, the need to make relevant policies that impact us, but also we recognize that internally, not only within LBJ, within the Medicaid program in American Samoa and within our government, we also have problems that we have to take care of. Thank but you. it does take time. Thank you, Director. Thank you very Next much. Next question is, uh, it has to do with the century-old water system, and I, I think I'm going to just uh, give this to CEO um, Um The effect, can you tell us what effect that the water system has on the health in American Samoa? It's just come to my attention that um, we have lots of these pipes that are um, lead pipes and, and whatnot, and how does the waters the island's water infrastructure problems, does it interfere with your ability to maintain a sanitary environment for your patients at the hospital? We have replaced the water lines to, uh, to the LBJ hospital with PVC pipings. Unfortunately, we continue to be on the watch by ASPA on the polling water uh, alerts, so which means to tell us that we the water system, the supplies that comes to LBJ is still uh, on uh, on a watch out uh, by ASPA. So despite the fact that we have uh, uh, BBC replacements, but uh, there are other areas of American Samoa that still have that uh, lead piping that brings the water through LBJ. Thank you, CEO. And uh, let's see. I want to thank, again, the uh, witnesses for traveling all this way. And thank you, CEO, in particular, for all you do to try to improve the health care of our patients. Thank you. thank you, Director. Thank you very much. I yield back the balance of my time.